Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see another set of Databricks interview questions as part of the playlist that I have created on the various Databricks interview questions. So let's move ahead. And before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram. And I have leave the link in the description box. So let's move ahead with the first question, which is what is the benefit of the lazy evaluation in Spark or in the Databricks? Now, these questions that we are talking about in the whole playlist, they are a combination of Databricks plus Spark. You know, I hope you understand that fact that the same questions can also be asked when you are interviewing for a pure Spark uh, developer role. So now uh, when you talk about uh, the benefits of lazy evaluation in Spark, basically what we need to understand is what is a lazy evaluation. So lazy evaluation is an evaluation strategy in Spark that delays the evaluation of an expression until its value is needed. So when I say that, usually in any other programming language, what happens it is that it executes any, any programming language, it will execute line by line. So if you have written five lines, each of those lines will execute one after the other. But in case of Spark, what will happen is if you have five lines, right? The first three lines will not be executed if they are not needed, right? If they are not needed, if they are not using the three lines that you have written in the code, then those will not be executed. And that is a very, very, very big plus point of the Spark. And that is what is called as a lazy evaluation, right? And now if you if you see that way, right? So why it is an important thing, right? Why do we give so much emphasis to the lazy evaluation? So uh, if you're coming from the software engineering background, you would already know time complexity and the space complexity. And if not, I'll explain you right now. So basically, whenever you're writing any piece of code or whenever you're trying to execute anything, in that case, how much time, right, a particular piece of code is taking, that is the time complexity and how much space a particular piece of code is taking while running that is the space complexity and the idea should be to reduce both of them right in any in any code that you write the idea should be to reduce the space and the time complexity using sparks lazy evaluation we can overcome both right we can reduce both we can reduce the time complexity we can reduce the space complexity as well how we can re uh, reduce this reduce this because first of all you're not executing everything line by line you're only executing the things if they're needed now in that case what will happen is you are automatically reducing the space complexity as well as time complexity because unnecessary operations which are not required are not running right are not being executed hence the time gets saved and at the same time the space gets as the space gets saved there is no overhead so you have got reduced overhead now how spark on top of that spark also does one more thing so spark has something called as directed acyclic graph or it has something called as catalyst optimizer. So catalyst optimizer, what it does is, is creates a physical and the logical plan of your code. So if you have five lines of code, three lines are not needed. So three lines will not be executed. Only two lines will be executed. And how they will be executed, the best plan for their execution is also created by catalyst optimizer. So what it does is it actually helps you to create an optimized flow of your code, the optimized way in which your code will run and hence reducing the time and the space complexity both, right? So I hope you understood this, how lazy evaluation works in Spark and how it is like really beneficial. Now, We'll move on to the second question without any delay. So guys, uh, basically I'm explaining all of these questions. So it's not just a pure, you know, uh, you know, anything that you can cram from these videos. I want you guys to understand the concept as well when you are trying to go through these interview questions. It's not just a cramming uh, video. Okay. Uh, when you talk about the next question we, uh, is how we can add a new column to a Spark data frame. Now you already have a Spark data frame and you want to add a new column. How do you do that? It's a pretty simple question, but through this, in, uh, through this question, an interviewer basically wants to understand how well versed you are with the coding, how much hands-on you have, because if you have hands-on, it's a very easy thing for you to do. 
Now to do this, here is the solution. Basically, uh, first of all, I'm just creating a data frame spark dot create data frame API. I have made the whole playlist on the data break. So I'm not reiterating everything here, but I have created a data frame over here. And then I'm using dot with column. I'm using DF dot with column and the column name is column four and lit zero. So lit zero, what it will do, it will add zero in all the rows of the column four. That is what it is going to do, right? So using dot with column, you can add any column to the data bricks, uh, to the data, uh, to, to the spark data frame. And whatever expression that you want to put, you can put over here. Here I have put lit zero. Otherwise, if you have any other expression or any other column that also you can put over here. Another way of doing that is df dot select. Let's say you have employee ID, you have salary. And then if you want to create a new column in the third, for example, if you can see over here, I have said salary into minus one, salary into minus one dot as the new column. Now, again, this is an, another style of writing or the style of writing or the style of spark coding. You can say in both of these two ways, you can actually go ahead and create a new column in the spark data frame so let's move ahead with the new column how you can drop a column in the spark data frame again an easy one so when you talk about dropping you can simply say df dot drop and you can put in the column name if you have a list of a column name you can put in that list as well so for example if you see if you have column one column two column three all these three columns you want to drop right then you can see over here df dot drop and star calls now all of these columns will be dropped if you have multiple columns to be dropped otherwise you can simply say df dot drop or you can also say df dot drop and call basically from pyspark dot sql dot uh, from pyspark dot sql import functions and as f and you can use call function to specify a column name also over here and you can simply drop it. This is the syntax. If you have to drop multiple columns, you can drop it using df.drop and specifying all the columns over here or you can specify the columns like this and you can simply drop them from a particular data frame. Going ahead with the next question. How to read a CSV in a Spark data frame? What is in for schema? What are the different options while reading the file? Now again, a common question to understand how good you are on uh, like uh, how easy you are with writing uh, small pieces of reads and writes or drops or additions uh, to a uh, data frame in Spark. Now, how do you read a CSV in a Spark data frame? So how do you read a CSV file in a data frame? And then what is info schema? What are the different options while reading the file? So for this, basically, if you look over here, how do you read a file in the data frame? So if you see here, spark dot read dot option header true dot schema custom schema dot csv part to the csv. Now, if you have been watching all my playlist on Databricks, it's a very easy question for you guys. So all the questions that I have mentioned in my interview series, if you have been following my Databricks playlist, I don't think you need any help. You guys can actually go ahead and answer these questions very well. Now. To read a particular file, you will always say, you will always use spark.read.option, this particular API, and then you will say header. If you want header to be true, then you will put header true. Dot schema, you will define custom schema over here. Now, the custom schema means you want to define the schema yourself. If you want to infer the schema from the file that you are reading, right? In that case, you will say infer schema is true. So the second part of the question, what is infer schema? So basically, if you want to infer the schema from the file, you don't want to specify it manually, then here you will say infer schema, right? Otherwise, if you want to specify the schema, now if you can see here, I have given, the spe I have specified the schema, custom schema, struct type, right? The name is for, is one of the column. It is of string type. Then age is the next column, which is integer type. Then you have gender, which is a string type. Now I have specified the schema. I want the data frame to use this particular schema when reading dot csv when reading the csv file from this particular path that is why i have created the schema and i'm saying dot schema custom schema right otherwise i will say infer schema now when you say otherwise i will say infer schema now if you look at this option option header equal to true now the second part of the question is what is this option right what are the different options that you can specify 
Now, whenever you are reading, you can define multiple options. So, for example, header is true over here. So, if you see uh, spark.read.format, right, you can define your data source format as well in this way as well. And you can say dot options and all the options you can specify. So, for example, here header is an option and the value is true, right? So similarly, if you see, there are different options. So header, infer schema that we have just talked about, delimiter, encoding, quote, escape, multi-line, ignore, leading, and trailing white spaces. So these are the different options that you can specify. So when you are reading the file, if you do not want header, right, you can simply specify header equal to false. You can do that. If you want to infer the schema, you can simply say infer schema is true. So here you will also say option header true. Similarly, you can also say uh, option infer schema true and if you are not inferring the schema you will say dot schema and you will define the custom schema over here so similarly you have delimiter if you have any delimiter that you want to specify you can specify that the type of encoding that you want to specify for the input file you can do that you know if you want to specify the character used to enclose fields in a particular file you can use the code similarly escape multi-line ignoring leading and the white spaces uh, you know leading and the training white spaces as well so these are the different options it would be much easier for you guys as well if you follow the playlist you know that i have on the data learn databricks in 30 days and the databricks hands-on tutorial so these Two playlists covers all of this because we have been doing a lot of work in those videos as well. So I hope you like this particular video and I hope you were, take, uh, you were able to take good from these videos and I hope you are liking them as well and keep supporting and thank you so much for being till here. Do remember to like, share and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for being till here.